it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my July book haul and this is a pretty massive book haul. I have one physical book to talk to you about and over 80 Kindle books to talk to you about which when I sat down and typed up the list I was actually a little bit gobsmacked by how many books there were. So yeah, we're just going to get into it. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about what each of these books are about because we'll be here all day, but uh, yeah, we're just going to get into it. So the only physical book that I have to talk to you about is Knife by Joe Nesbo. This is the next book in the Harry Hole series and I bought a hardback edition because Waterstone sent me an email to say that I could buy a signed copy and you guys know I'm a bit of a sucker for things like that so um, yeah I bought it it's got beautiful blue sprayed edges and it is signed hopefully you can see that um, so I think I'm behind by a good few books now I wonder if it will say in here whereabouts this comes so I've read The Snowman and um, there are, f this is the fifth book that I haven't read. So you've got The Leopard, Phantom, Police, The First, and then this one. So I've got quite a few books to read to catch up, but I do really like this series. This is like a Swedish crime series, um, and it's really, really good. Okay, and then all the other books that I've got to talk to you about are books that I bought on my Kindle. Um, I bought from the monthly deals and then from different recommendations that I had throughout the month. So, the first one is I Heart Hawaii by Lindsay Kelk. This is the eighth book in the I Heart series. I have a couple of the I Heart, I Heart, I Heart series on my shelf that I bought in a charity book. Um, in a charity book? In a charity bookshop. I think last month or the month before. This is the most recent book in the series. So I was quite surprised to see it on like a monthly deal. Then The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. This is sort of like a mystery. I don't think it's a thr I don't think you could describe it as a thriller, but it's a mystery book and it's kind of got like a groundhog day element to it where the person who's investigating the death of Evelyn Hardcastle wakes up in somebody else's body from the party that they attended and I think it's about them trying to work out who killed her. Um, then we've got Dear Mrs Bird by A.G. Pierce. I don't really know anything about this book. I think it's sort of contemporary, but I keep seeing it around booktube and it was on a deal. Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Uh, Lisa Jewell is a thriller writer. I'm yet to read anything by her and I think I have a few books of hers on my Kindle now. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting some. The Familiars by Stacey Hall. This is another one that I've seen around booktube and I don't actually know what it's about. It's got a really sort of like Victorian-esque cover but I don't know whether that actually reflects what it's about so we'll see. Uh, the Girl Before by J.P. Delaney. This is a, another thriller book. Uh, it's a book that I've seen around a bit so I jumped on that. One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This is a YA thriller um, and I remember my colleague read it because we were thinking of buying it in as like a class reader and she read it and said that she didn't think it was particularly um, suitable for our kids at school so I thought I'd give it a go. Uh, the Taking of Annie Thorne by CJ Cheetah. This is CJ Cheetah's second thriller and again it's uh, one that I'm quite surprised that I saw on Kindle Deal um, because it's just recently come out, um, but it was. The sun's doing that thing where it keeps coming in and out of clouds and changing the lighting, so I apologise. Then we've got The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. I've read The Handmaid's Tale and Blind Assassin, I think, by Margaret Atwood and nothing else, so I thought I would give this one a go. Um, Flight Risk, The Highs and Lows of Life as a Doctor at Heathrow Airport by Stephanie Green. This is a non-fiction book, as it says. Um, I'm really, really interested in books like this, so I thought I would pick that one up. 
Five Feet Apart by Rachel Lippincott. I think this was part of the deals because of the film coming out. And I think it's a YA book about two people who can't be near each other because they're sick, but then they fall in love. I think that's right. I could be wrong. Uh, the Girl on the Cliff by Lucinda Riley. I read the first book in her Storm Sisters series and really liked it. So um, I saw another book by her. This is a standalone book, um, but I thought I would get it. Uh, the Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden. This is book number three in the Winter Night trilogy. Um, and again, quite a recent release, was surprised to see it there. And I own books one and two in physical copy. The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry by Rachel Joyce. I think I'd forgotten that I had this one in physical copy, but now I have it in ebook form. Uh, before She Knew Him by Peter Swanson. Um, I've never read anything by Peter Swanson before and um, Books and Lala always says really good things about his writing, so I picked this one up. Uh, the Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden, which is book number two in the Winter Night trilogy. Um, also, I now have this in physical and digital format. Uh, the Queen's Fall by Philippa Gregory. Philippa Gregory is a writer that I've, I don't know, decided in my head that if I'm going to pick up books by her it would be digitally. Um, I don't think I've read anything by her before, but she writes kind of like historical fiction books set like in the Tudor period in England. Then we've got Hot Milk by Deborah Levy. This is a literary fiction book that was, I think, long listed for the Women's Prize a couple of years ago. Um, it's quite short actually, I don't think it's just over the 200 page mark, which I was quite surprised by it, but anyway. Uh, Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is sort of like um, uh, a paranormal book that's a bit of a classic, but a modern classic maybe. I don't know. Uh, then we've got Holiday SOS. The Life Saving Adventures of a Travelling Doctor by Ben McFarlane, another one of those non-fiction books that um, looked really good. Uh, Zero Waste Ho Home, The Ult Ultimate Guide by B. Johnson. Um, I bought this one because, um, yeah, I'm trying to be a bit more sort of like eco-friendly and things like that, and this sounded like it had some good advice in it. Uh, Diana, Her True Story in Her Own Words by Andrew Morton. I think this is the 25th anniversary edition which makes me feel quite old um but i think this came out just shortly after she died or maybe it was before she died i can't remember now um i think it might have been just before she died but anyway um i'm fascinated by princess diana um, and want to know more about her uh, the Pants of Perspective, One Woman's 3000 Kilometre Running Adventure Through the Wilds of New Zealand by Anna McNuff. This reminds me of Wild by Cheryl Schrade and it was probably published because it has those kind of nuances, that's the wrong word, but it kind of has that kind of thing going on. Um, so I thought I'd give that a go. Starcross by Minnie Drake, um, I think this is a contemporary book, don't know anything more about it than that. How to Give Up Plastic by Will McCallum. Um, this is another one of those books to help me try and be a little bit more eco-friendly. Uh, Nora Webster by Colm Toybin. Um, I read Brooklyn by him last year and really, really liked it. Um, so I, this is one of his most famous books, so I thought I'd pick that up. Uh, Strong Woman, The Truth About Getting to the Top by Karen Brady. Karen Brady is, um, is one of the judges or helpers on the UK version of The Apprentice and she's also I think CEO of West Ham Football Club in the UK um, yeah and she I've always been interested in her career and how she's got to the top and that sort of thing so I thought I'd give that a go and um, Every Note Played by Lisa Genova I read Still Alice by her last year and absolutely loved it. It was It's a favourite book of mine, so I've got a couple more of her books to read now. Hold by Michael Donker is one that I've had out from the library a couple of months ago and I put on a book buzz video of mine. Um, and it's a book that follows, I think it's a YA book that follows three girls all from different African countries whose lives intertwine in some sort of way, I think. 
The Royal Runaway by Lindsay Emery. I think this is a contemporary romance book following a royal and I tend to like that particular theme in romance books. Uh, One Bed for Christmas by Jackie Lau. I have... This is another romance book but and I don't remember where I got the recommendation for this one but it looks good. Uh, the Fallen Jealousies by Tilly Cole. This is book number 0 0.5 in the Deadly Virtue series. Um, I think Jess from PSOS Books talks about this series on her channel and I think this was free on Kindle. Um, so I decided to pick it up. Uh, Claimed by L. Kennedy, which is number one in the Outlaw series, another contemporary romance book. The Horse Dancer by Jojo Moyes, which I think is one of her earliest books. And again, I think I've had it out from the library. Um, to kind of read through her backlist um, but I had to take it back in the end and now I have it on my Kindle. Um, An Unwanted Guest by Shari Lapina. I now think I own all three of Shari Lapina's books and I haven't read any of them but she's supposed to be a very good sort of like thriller writer. Um, I bought a copy of Outlander by Diana Gabaldon uh, which is number one in the Outlander series um, because Sarah over at Steeped in Books was doing sort of like a two month read along I've only managed to read the first chapter, but I'll read it eventually. Um, Hot Mess by Emily Goodwin. This is number one in the Love is Messy series. Um, it's another contemporary romance book. War of the Roses by Iris Moreland. Book 0 0.5 in the Flower Shop Sisters series. Um, another contemporary romance book. Tell Me a Secret by Jane Fallon. And Jane Fallon writes a lot of um, contemporary chick lit books. Um, and I only found out a couple of months ago that she's married to Ricky Gervais. So I don't know why that was like a massive surprise to me, but I never knew that before. Uh, the Little Tea Shop of Lost and Found by Trisha Ash Ashley. This is a chiclet book. Um, not read anything by her before. And I haven't also read anything by Lucy Dillon. And I, so I picked up Where the Light Gets In by her. Um, Expecting the Earl's Baby by Jessica Gilmore. This is book number one in the Summer Weddings series. This is a Mills and Boone book. Um, and The Duke That I Marry by Kathy Maxwell, which is book number three in the Spinster Heiresses, Heiresses series. Um, I try to pick up book number one in series where I can. Um, but I think somebody said that you don't have to read this series in order. But I, t I tend to like it, so I'll probably read it in order anyway. Um, the Olive Tree by Lucinda Riley. This is another one of her standalone books um, that I picked up. Um, like I said before, I really enjoyed The Storm Sister. Uh, the Cactus by... Oh no, hold on, I'm skipping. Fool Me Once by Harlan Co Cobin. Harlan Cobin is a very prolific thriller writer. Um, and I've never read anything by him before. This is supposed to be one of his better thrillers, so I bought that. We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves by Karen Joy Fowler. This was one that was going around booktube, um, I think last year. I have no idea what it's about, but I picked it up. Wedding Night by Sophie Kinsella. Um, I think she published this under a different name, and I can't remember what that different name is now. Um, but uh, yeah, one of her chiclet books. The Cactus by Sarah Hayward was one of the books on one of my book buzz videos and it was also in Reese Witherspoon's Hello Sunshine book club recently um, so it piqued my interest again and it came through on a, I think a daily deal. Uh, the Apprentice by Tess Gerritsen which is book number two in the Rizzoli and Eyes series um, and I have one of her books on my Thrillerathon TBR um, and you know so quite early on in the series, I think there are a lot of books in this series, so I picked that one up. Uh, Seven Stones to Stand or Fall by Diana Gabaldon. This is the short story collection from the Outlander series. Wild Swans by Jung Chang. This is a book that I had physically, I've had twice now and I've unhauled it twice. Um, it's a very chunky non-fiction book and it's about three women's lives in China, I think, and it's like a generational sort of account I think. Uh, the Light We Lost by Jill Santopolo. This is another Reese Witherspoon book club book. Um, I don't know anything about it but she's had some good books on that list. Uh, Night Road by Kristen Hanna. You know whatever is on deal from Kristen Hanna I tend to buy. 
Uh, Cross Her Heart by Sarah Pimbra. Um, I haven't read anything by Sarah Pimbra before, but I think I've got two books of hers now. Or maybe, maybe I have all three of them. But this was the most recent one that she has brought out, I think. Uh, the Player by Denise Grover Swank. This is book number two in the Wedding Pack series. I have book number one on my Kindle, so I was really excited to see book number two on a deal. Uh, Magic Breaks by Ka Kate Daniels. This is book number... This isn't by Kate Daniels. It's by... I can't remember who it's by. I'll have it up here anyway. It's book number seven in the Kate Daniels series. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, I've, I've written that down wrong. Um, Holding On by Jill Sanders, which is book number three in the Haven Montala series. Um, I read book number one as part of my summer romance book, Bingo, um, as part of that readathon. Really enjoyed it. I had book two on my Kindle and now I've got book three. Mirror Mirror by Cara Delevingne. It really intrigues me when celebrities write books. Um, this is a YA book, I believe. I don't know anything more about it than that. I think it's in the fantasy category. We'll see whether it's any good. Smooth Talking Cowboy by Maisie Yates. This is book number one in the Gold Valley series. Again, I'm really excited to see that that there. This is another contemporary romance book. Um, Interlude, a novella by Linda Liao Miller. This has got a very similar cover to the Dylan series that she's written. Um, I can't remember what that series is called. Um, but I looked it up and it's not... It's not um, part of that series, it's something separate, but there we go. Um, Darkly Dreaming Dexter by Jeff Lindsay. This is book number one in the Dexter series. Um, my colleague and I were talking about this series um, because we use the opening of the first book as an extract um, in our teaching. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really good opening to, to a book and it happened to be really cheap i think it was 99p so i um i got that and um, then i picked up the wedding party by jasmine guillory this is book number three in the wedding date series um, and i actually pre-ordered this because it was only on kindle for 199 as a pre-order which i thought was really really good um and i need to get around to reading this series now clean sweet by iona andrews this is book number one in innkeeper chronicles there was a morning where I was watching Mara from Books Like Woe and she was doing like a, she has different romance recommendations, videos on her channel um, and she talked about Iona Andrews. I don't think she just writes romance though, I think she writes other things as well. Maybe she was the one that wrote the Kate Daniels series, I can't remember anyway. So I picked up, also picked up Silent Blade by her which is book number one in the Kinsman series and of Swine and Roses which is just a standalone book that she's written. Then I've got A Kiss at Midnight by Eloise James. Eloise James. This is book number one in the Fairy Tales series. This is another, I think, historical romance series, but it's their retellings of fairy tales, and this is obviously Cinderella. Sounds really good. Then I've got Agnes Moore's Wild Night by Alyssa Cole. This is one of her standalone romances, and I think it's um it's historical romance set in a bit of a different historical time period I think like I don't know because if I say the wrong thing then what but yeah some sort of like way past historical period that's like the worst description ever but anyway uh, Marigold's a Murder by London Love It this is book number one in the Port Danby mystery series um I think this was free on Kindle for a little while um and I think Sarah put me onto this um, the Search by Nora Roberts. Um, I've been increasingly interested in Nora Roberts' writing and this came up as cheap. You are by Caroline Kepnes. Um, this is a book that I've wanted to read for such a long time and um, finally it came up as cheap on Kindle. Voyager by Adana Gabaldon. This is book number three in the Outlander series. Um, since I book out, bought Outlander, um, a few of her books have come up as cheap, so I've been sort of collecting them, so hopefully I like Outlander. The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. This is a contemporary book that's come out very, very recently. I think it's about two people that um, live in the same flat and share the same bed, but one of them has like a job that where they're out at night and the other one during the day, so they're not actually seeing each other. It just sounds like a really weird sort of premise. 
Um, but I think it's about the fact that they fall in love. Um, Fallen Too Far by Abby Glines. This is book number one in the Rosemary Beach series and some other series as well, I think. Um, I think this was a recommendation from Jess from Peace Love Books. Swan Song by Kelly Greenberg. Jeff Cott, I think. This is a literary fiction book. I saw her talking about it on Twitter about a year ago um, and was really interested in it. And again, it was on a daily deal, I think. Um, I in a Magic by Iona Andrews. This is book number one in the Iron Covenant series, so another one of her series. Defending Harlow by Susan Stoker. This is book number four in the Mountain Mercenary series. I have no idea where I got this recommendation from, but it was cheap. Uh, the Favourite, The Life of Sarah Churchill and the History Behind the Major Motion Picture by Ophelia Field. Uh, this has obviously come out as a film recently and it's all about her life. It's In His Heart by Shelley Alexander, book number one in the Red River Valley series. Again, another one, recommendation from some sort of video that I watched, I think. Um, so I bought the first book in that series. A Honey Bee Heart Has Five Openings by Helen Jukes. Um, this is a book that I saw on Doris's channel from all the books. Uh, she tends to like books that have got bees on the cover. Um, this, I can't remember whether this is fiction or non-fiction. I think it's non-fiction. So anyway, there we go. An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gabaldon. This is book number seven in the Outlander series. A few books left, guys. Um, a Rogue by Any Other Name by Sarah McLean. This is book number one in the Rules of Scoundrel series. Um, I've heard really good things about Sarah McLean. I wanted to read something by her. His Boss's Daughter by Mia Ford. This is another, another contemporary romance book. The Girls of Mischief Bay by Susan Mallory. This is book number one in the Mich Mischief Bay series. Um, Sarah from Steeped in Books really likes Susan Mallory um, and I wanted to dip my toe into her work a little bit more. Hate to Want You by Alicia Wright. This is book number one in the Forbidden Heart series. Um, quite a few people have recommended Alicia Wright's romance writing. Uh, this is another contemporary romance book. Um, it's quite steamy, I've heard. And the last one is Corrupt by Penelope Douglas, book number one in the Devil's Night series, uh, which I think is sort of on the more darker romance side, which I haven't dipped my toe into at all, so I'll have to see how that goes. So, they were quite a lot of books that I had to get through, um, and I was sort of rushing towards the end because I think my mum's about to ring the doorbell, um, but yeah. Hopefully I didn't rush too much. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these books? What did you think of them? Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.